Well, hi there, and welcome back to Naturally Recovering Autism. I am your host, Karen Thomas, and as you know, we practice a lot of prevention and natural methods here, and it is generally for parents of children on the autism spectrum. And today, because we're going into the month of May, I really wanted to give moms something. Moms take such good care of their kids and their families, and sometimes they need to remember to take really good care of themselves too. So this episode is really for you, mom. And today we're going to be talking about thermography. And if you're not really well aware of it yet, um, don't worry, we're gonna be going into that uh, in detail, give you some, some good background. But it is a natural and safe preventative method of screening for breast exams. And I have a special guest with us here today. Her name is Gaya Powell. And I'm gonna give you a little bit of background on Gaya before I introduce her. Uh, she founded the Central Coast Thermography in 2009 to ensure that communities all over would have access Access to empowering this empowering technology. She is the graduate of the International Academy of Clinical Thermography and the Academy of Medical Infrared Training. Gaia has spent the past decade educating doctors as well as her patients on thermography's vital role as a window into one's own health. Her mission is focused on prevention and of disease through the power of ancient wisdom combined with modern medical innovation. But Gaya actually had a successful career as in the corporate world, as a business consultant, and I'm going to actually let her explain that because it's very interesting, and left all of that to uh, branch out and create um, a, an area, a place where, where moms or people could go to get thermography and, um, and, and find it more available because her own personal story led her into this. So first of all, welcome Gaya and thank you for being here with us today. Hi Karen, thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I've been doing thermography, um, I think I started with you over about a decade ago. Yeah, you were my first patient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even realize that back then. A lot of people had never even heard of it. And uh, I am a, a true believer in it because uh, I, I know so much uh, about it. And um, and I think it's probably good for you to you can give a little bit of your own personal story first because it is important uh, to for people, and they have a probably very similar story to yours. Mm -hmm. And um, and then kind of give some background on thermography and and why you know, that method is, is so valuable. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I appreciate this opportunity to help empower mothers and also mothers of the future and helping empower women of all ages. So unfortunately, I lost my mother when she was only 49 years old. And I was actually with her when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And they rushed her, you know, immediately into surgery, into her treatments. And um, I was fortunate in a way, uh, though it was too late for her, and obviously it was a very um, challenging and horrific journey. Um, we, she and I ended up going down to one of the clinics down close to the Mexico border and learned more about prevention and the fact that um, her having uh, been diagnosed with breast cancer did not increase my risk of uh, developing breast cancer, that, that basically it was on me, that it was like, it was up to me to take responsibility and focus on my whole health, including obviously food, clean water, um, my uh, stress level is, is a big key there, and realizing that, you know, my mother's journey had been different than mine. And um, she was my best friend, so obviously to this day, it's still devastating that I lost her at such a young age. But anyway, like you said, a lot of people have had that story. So when I got into my early 30s, my gynecologist was letting me know that I was at a high risk of developing breast cancer. So she wanted me to take a prescription she was writing and go get a mammogram and start having them early. And I respectfully declined and I didn't, I, it wasn't that I was anti-mammography, but after my education and doing more research, I really wanted things that would empower me and not do me harm. So I saw my mother's cancer. I saw where it came back. I saw, you know, obviously I experienced her journey alongside her and I wasn't comfortable with having repeated radiation, you know, shot into my, my chest wall. And also the, the uh, compression of my delicate breast tissue, you know, and also seeing, you know, her, her tumor. And if I did have a tumor, I did not want them um, 
you know, metastasizing the cancer or disturbing it or injuring my breast in any way. So I opted out. And I wasn't putting my head in the sand. I was taking, you know, pre preventative action, and I was engaged in my 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 health. I realized that my breasts were not these separate entities, um, you know, that were going to eventually go off and kill me. That they were part of my whole health, and so focusing on my whole health. And so I was very fortunate. Um, in about 1996, when the internet was just uh, in its infancy. Um, I discovered thermography, which is infrared thermal imaging that has been around. Uh, this technology is used by NASA, the police uh, force, the uh, military, and it's um, an incredible state-of-the-art technology. In fact, you, you see it used on uh, uh, movies and television shows, and you can see when the police are looking for suspects and it can pick up their heat. You know, for instance, the Boston bomber was found underneath a tarp because they could pick up his his body heat with that thermal camera and the outline of his, his body. So um, I decided, you know, hey, I'm going to check it out. Obviously, um, going down the path of my mother, I, I always questioned authority, and I wasn't just going to blindly follow what the, you know, what, what any uh, traditional med medical doctor nor, you know, alternative. Like, I really wanted to do my, my research, my due diligence. So when I went to get my first thermogram, uh, the doctor was in Los Angeles, and he explained to me that it's a physiological test, so it, it enables me to be, it's more um, predictive, so instead of just waiting for an anatomical screen like mammography, ultrasound, MRI, CT scan, PT scan, um, to tell you you already have a structural change, that a physiologist, your physiological state of being can kind of be monitored by thermography throughout the year. So every single human has their own unique thermal vascular roadmap that thermography can watch. So we know that inflammation leads to all disease. So when he saw my first thermogram, I was working in the entertainment industry. I was in uh, film and television production, and I ended up uh, moving over into the corporate realm of the entertainment industry. So high stress, and I could see from my thermogram that there was some inflammation. So he was, he asked me, he's like, do you drink Diet Coke? And I said, no, I'm, I, you know, I'm pretty healthy food-wise, but my stress level is high. And he's like, well, what about coffee? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I probably drink too much coffee. So he challenged me. He's like, why don't you go off coffee for 90 days and then come back and get another thermogram and I'll show you the difference. So I did, and that wasn't easy. I ended up with that horrible coffee <laughs> withdrawal headache. But when I went back in, he could literally show me uh, the change and how the inflammation had actually reduced just in that short time. So that really resonated with me, you know, being, being knowing that inflammation could lead to more serious things. So with thermography, it's completely harmless. As you mentioned, nobody touches you. So there's no compression. There's no radiation. It actually reads the radiation that comes from your body. And so when the camera starts to pick up the, heat, the changes in temperature, it creates a picture. So that picture is very empowering because we're very visual creatures. So if we could actually you know, have a window into our whole health, it can allow you to go back up the road and maybe go down a different path and make some changes. So we're pretty symmetrical from side to side. And we're looking for symmetry, and especially the breasts because they actually hang outside of the body, so they sh they're cooler. And so say if one of your breasts starts to develop a fever, in layman's terms, you're warned about that fever, so you can actually do something about it. You know, is it lymphatic congestion, an infection? Is it something that's going to, you know, be more serious down the road? But it allows you the opportunity to be warned so you can make some changes. Now, thermography can also show you um, overall systemic inflammation. So let a woman know, like, you know, are your hormones out of balance? Are you eating properly? How much is stress, you know, affecting your whole health? And so I've seen, it's very, been very inspiring that women, when they can see that they're very inflamed, that they actually, you know, take amazing uh, um, action to, to create a, a healthier world for themselves. So they can come back in 90 days to, to five months and really see an amazing difference. And so those images are, are very powerful. And so thermography speaks for itself. Like you, like anyone with common sense understands, especially doctors who, who are open to listening to how thermography can benefit them in continuing a, a more in-depth conversation with their patients, completely understand how important physiolog physiological information can be. So when a woman can see that, she is more... Um, 
apt to get back back on track or take your healthier path because most most women sadly don't realize how important it is to you know have self nurturing and especially mothers you know we they tend to and women in general we we are great multitaskers so we we you know we're trying to make everything great for everyone else mm -hmm always, you know, assuring every, everyone that it's going to be okay, even though you might be panicked inside. But it's really important that we do take that time to take care of ourselves. You got to put that oxygen mask on yourself first, you know, so you're around to help others. So, you know, I saw that with my mother, you know, trying to be the, you know, the perfect superwoman. And, you know, that didn't work well for her, but I learned from that. So trying to break that pattern. Right. And uh, the show, a lot of, we have, we have a lot of mothers of children with autism. So, you know, a lot of parents that, that, that there's that fear of what happens to my child if something happens to me, because they are caretakers that could go on into adulthood uh, to some degree. And so um, it, what I think is so wonderful about thermography is that, like you said, we're not, we're not compressing anything that could be creating more of a potential problem, but it's a way to very safely uh, be able to look into seeing if there's anything that is a potential for the future, which is what prevention really is. So exactly. that visual is really key where, you know, you can be told something, but if you have a visual behind it that shows you, then mm -hmm. you know, that, that reality, I think, comes in much stronger. Absolutely. And, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, I've, I've imaged hundreds of women at this point and, you know, it didn't matter if they were naturopathic doctors uh, to uh, women, women that are vegan, that do yoga every day. If there's not, if there's an underlying chronic stress, which we really see with people that are, are caregivers and women tend to end up in that spot more than men. Mm -hmm either taking care of an elderly parent or a child is so stressful that they do end up getting sick. So yes, when they can see their image reflected back at them, they really realize, boy, I better take care of myself, like you say, so they can continue to be around and learn healthy ways to manage that stress better. That, I know it sounds very, um, you know, simple, but it's, that's, probably the biggest challenge for women is really learning how to almost re re um, program our neural pathways so that we can, you know, try to uh, re alleviate stress uh, in a effective way because you can't eliminate the chronic stress -er, So you have to figure out a way to help, you know, uh, purge yourself from that, from those emotions. And, um, and the guilt, I mean, there's so much comes along with it because women want to be perfect and of course they're never going to be. So then they hold a lot of, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, and that could drive you crazy. Mm -hmm. So yes, a, a thermogram is really a, a powerful way to, you know, um, in, you know, empower women. And, and what's great about thermography too is, is that women can start at any age. Like as soon as they've, you know, I would recommend when a woman gets into her 20s to start having a thermogram say every third year so she's more engaged in her breast health she can see how how you know maybe partying too much or the different influences can make her more inflamed or that maybe her her hormones are out of balance like a lot of women don't realize you can you can work with a progressive doctor to balance those hormones early in life and shouldn't have to go through terrible cramps and migraines and whatnot so helping them be empowered early about their whole health as well and so when they can be engaged early you know most women don't even know that their breast is a gland or that they will fill a lump at some point. Most women don't get cancer. You know, we've created this culture where, you know, women are supposed to embrace their femininity and we're powerful and we can do anything that we set our mind to. But when we turn 40, these are now these landmines that are going to go off and kill us. I mean, I, I've imaged so many women, sadly, that live in such horrific, um, uh, it's uh, surveillance fatigue that they, they literally believe it's not a matter of if it's a when, and that's a terrible way to have women, you know, exist. Mm -hmm. And then working, you know, like I said, I wasn't anti uh, mammography. It just wasn't for me. And so I went along year after year getting my thermogram, very empowering. I didn't get involved in the pink ribbon crusades and whatnot because it didn't resonate with me. I didn't really believe there was going to be a magical cure to all the 20 some types of breast cancer. Like I really wanted more money to be put into education and how do you avoid disease, all disease, you know, from, you know, an early age and, 
and um, educating and empowering people in, in, on that path instead of after the fact. I mean, not that I'm against it. I mean, most most people involved in those organizations are well are very well meaning. You know, they mean they mean well. Obviously, I mean, it just wasn't for me. So I. Um, when I, you know, was going along with my career, I ended up being involved in politics. I was actually Arnold Schwarzenegger's chief of staff before I became elected governor. And um, once um, he was elected, I needed a break because I had been like a hamster on a, on a uh, wheel for many years. You know, stress was through the ceiling, adrenal glands were burnout. And so I moved up to the Central Coast and um, wanted to get my dad I was getting older and I wanted to have him have a more, you know, relaxed life as well. And I... Um, you know, I had been getting my thermogram annually for many, many years, a couple decades, and I, you know, looked around for a place to get my thermogram, and I was shocked to find out there was no place to get one, that like maybe a technician would come into the area every once in a while. Mm -hmm. It was literally an epiphany. I changed careers. I'm like, how could this be? I wanted to get trained. I wanted to know everything about it. I hoofed it. I would go, you know, knock on doors for the doctors. And as soon as I would show them my case studies, it would totally make sense to them. Because a physiological test, similar to having your temperature taken and you're being weighed and you have your blood pressure taken, all of those things are physiological tests to be monitored for change over time, just like thermography. So that when you start to see change, then you can have a more in-depth conversation with that woman or patient and find out, well, why do you think you're gaining weight? You know, why do you think, you know, maybe you have a high temperature and it's very serious. Like, you know, it will, thermography is not going to diagnose a disease, but it'll let you know that, hey, there's something that could be very serious that you need to engage and figure out what it is so you can heal yourself. And, um, you know, I work with the right community of people to help you on that path. So, um, you know, just letting us know the, the, you know, where are you, where are you? You know, when you have your, I've, sadly, I've imaged women that have had decades of mammograms that are negative and they have their first thermogram and it's a very strong indication that one of their breasts has a very severe fever that they can see. I mean, that's the great thing about thermography. It's like, you can tell yourself that, you know, hey, I really need to figure out, you know, what, what's going on here. And, um, that then sadly, some of them were diagnosed with stage four cancer. So you've been told for decades that you didn't have cancer. So now you're ignoring your intuition if you actually think something is going on. And then secondly, um, did it cause the cancer by the repeated radiation and the compression? Has it metastasized? And then the biopsy can lead to spreading the cancer. So just getting back to a much less um, invasive uh, path for women and much more empowering. So I ended up working with a radiologist in Santa Barbara for a couple of years. And, and again, I wasn't anti-mammography. It just wasn't for me. And this radiologist was very progressive and she was also an advocate of ultrasound. The ultrasound is also anatomical and will tell you that something's already there. Thermography is more predictive, you know, and letting you know something might, you know, is, could, could very well be there, but more importantly, is something leading that is inflammation leading to something so she was open to having me image in her practice well after being there for uh, you know a couple of years I personally I am not a doctor but there is under no circumstance would I ever have a mammogram I did not see any for, for anybody because there's too much risk and most women nine out of ten women find their own lump between their mammograms mm -hmm. and when dangerous practices that doctors uh, push women into is that when you feel a lump, all the mammogram is going to tell you is you have a lump. So why would you crush it and run the chance of metastasizing it when all you need to do is have an ultrasound to determine fluid-filled cyst or a dense object and a biopsy is the only thing that's going to actually diagnose if it's cancer or not, but taking a breath because even a biopsy can spread cancer. I mean, if they put the needle all the way through the tumor or they don't get it, it takes a couple of shots, but there's been, you know, um, doctors who like Alan uh, Spreen, who he's an MD, who he actually would do post-op uh, biopsies. He was a pathologist on this, uh, mastectomies, you know, women who obviously their breast was removed, but he could actually see the tumors that were in a straight line where the biopsy needle had gone in prior to the 
surgery. So again, just taking a breath because the body wants to heal and knowing that women, there's no rush. Like if you are diagnosed, you know, because I saw it with my mother, the full court press to, boy, we will save you. Like put your trust in us and you are so panicked. Of course, you agree to everything that they say and the, you know, surgery can spread cancer. Uh, they don't really tell you that your life will never be the same and that the treatments, sadly, may actually be worse than the disease because the whole stri strategy with chemother chemotherapy and radiation is, you know, let's kill the disease before we kill the patient. And I would love it if we could get back to, because you can't always avoid, like I'm dealing with some skin cancer, so I wasn't able to prevent it. California girl out beach and skiing and, you know, not wearing sunscreen, you know, um, invincible, but stress or whatever, you know, trying to heal myself with a, a, a more a mineral-based uh, um, option, you know, medication. So, I, you know, for me personally, finding um, natural ways to help heal that aren't uh, going to um, harm uh, normal cells. And mm -hmm. just really trying to educate women to take a breath. Your hair is not on fire. You're not contagious. Do your own homework. Go someplace quiet and don't let anyone, not even your own family, intrude on that. It's like you have to really follow your inner um, intelligence, as Christine uh, Horner uh, would say. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, really feel really uh, empowered by your decisions and then stick with those decisions. And whatever those decisions may be, standard treatment, more alternative, whatever they are, and, and keeping people around you that are respectful of that. So I guess the the... Some of the most important things that I can share with your audience um, is, you know, daughters, please try to um, educate your mothers, <laughs> some who've already been, you know, on this, this uh, journey for many decades of thinking that having their annual mammogram is their best, you know, ally against breast cancer, which, you know, mammography has never helped anyone avoid breast cancer. So it can, you know, there are many doctors who also say that, you can increase your, you could decrease your risk of getting cancer by 30% by not having a mammogram. And right. there's and a lot of people are taught that, that that's the best form of prevention and then insurance is covering it. But mm -hmm. I think you told me once that the statistics say it's only about 2% or something like that, that they've mm -hmm. ever over the, over the history of it actually helped prevent that it's really not doing much and it's actually causing more harm because yes. of that that possibility to metastasize something if you're you're compressing it you can squish the tumor and, and burst it open so exactly that, like well, an atomic bomb explosion like well, not little cells coming out during a biopsy or whatever but a you know a pretty significant uh unleashing of those well, cancer cells and if the stem stem cells you know that's where it comes back you know metastasizes I thought it was interesting too. You told me the story once of, uh, it was a, I think a physician's office that did a lot of um, of mammography, and that they were trying to they were moving over into thermography. So all of the women who had been doing the the uh, mammograms for years in that office decided, okay, we should all get thermography because we're going to be start we're going to start doing this, and we need to have personal experience. So they had been having mammograms for years. And I think he told me the head woman, I won't say any names, but that found right away in her first one, and she had been getting regular mammograms that in her first thermography, you saw stage four breast cancer. Yeah. Right. So the thermography, again, it won't diagnose it, but her, her one breast was so um, elevated in temperature compared to her other breasts, it was a pretty strong indication that there was probably something very serious going on. And then after further evaluation, she was diagnosed with stage four. So she was actually a technician. She's the woman that actually will put the women, you know, into the mammogram machine. And, you know, she was working with a radiologist, one of the top radiologists, and she ended up, you know, that radiologist missed that cancer all those years. And I don't even blame the radiologist. They're using a very, um, a very uh, ineffective screening. You know, they're looking for white on white. So cancer is white on an x-ray and your breast tissue when it's dense is white. So it's like trying to find a white rabbit in a blizzard. It's like nearly impossible. So these poor radiologists are like seeing hundreds of x-rays, you know, maybe even in a day. It's very, very, very disempowering for them as well. 
So um, again, if women could start earlier and engaging in their whole health and, and know their options and that they have a right to those options, that if you let your insurance company dictate your medical mm -hmm. um, care, that's very dangerous. And I, I try to empower women by saying, if your doctor or your insurance company is insisting that you get a mammogram before you can have anything else paid for, like an ultrasound, MRI, thermography, that you have them put in writing to you that if they do have a mammogram, because you'll, of course, agree to it if they'll put it in writing, it will not harm you and it will not metastasize a cancer if you should have a cancer. And they won't put it in writing. And then you would respectfully say, then I insist that you pay for whatever I choose. Is that the things I'm choosing are approved by the FDA as an adjunct to mammography, but years ago, those with a vested interest decided mammography was the standard of care, even though it's very outdated. And, and the 3D mammograms that they're now selling are actually have more radiation. So they're, these poor women are now having the traditional digital mammogram than the 3D mammogram, which is basically a CT scan. And... You know, it's just, is that really helping anybody instead of like focusing on prevention and less invasive ways to help empower women? And women, sadly, you know, they feel like they have been underserved. You know, that if it, men were going through this, this would never have been carried on for this many years. And again, it's if, if women would look up Gilbert Welsh, MD, or Peter Ghosh, or, you know, the, the, um, the, those are doctors. There's many doctors have written books. They've published studies, you know, to warn women about how the risks far outweigh the benefits in utilizing mammography and chemotherapy and radiation, and that there are other options and that women just need to educate themselves and they have the right to do so and don't let anyone push you into anything. And I let women know one of the most important, powerful tools in, that they have at their side is their smartphone. I recommend that all people, but women in particular, especially when we're dealing with the breast health industry, that you, you respectfully record all of your medical appointments because you're paying for their expertise, just like you are if you were a lawyer or an accountant or anyone who's got a specialty, even a psychic, you know, if a good psychic will give you the recording of the session. So you just say, I hope you don't mind every time I leave here, which is true. My women have told me this. They can't remember anything. All they hear is either cancer or no cancer. Most mm -hmm. what kind of cancer they have, all they heard was cancer. And so if you can record it, there's no more definitives. There's no more bullying. There's no more, you know, pushing people down a path that has been proven over and over, sadly, that it just doesn't work. So as women, we need to help our mothers navigate onto a better, a better, healthier, more empowering path and, and, and young women, you know, to help educate them and to not falling down, you know, not falling down that rabbit hole of this very disempowering breast health industry. It's, you know, you know, I started off just doing thermography because I wanted women to have the option. And that led me to you know, the radiologist in my area complained about me to the FDA and the FDA sent me a letter basically saying you can't have your camera in your commercials because you can't market that particular brand. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and being from the political world and the world I came from, I'm like, okay, what's really going on here? And you can't use the word alternative. I can mm -hmm. use the word option. And I'm like, okay, now we're just splitting hair. So obviously I had you know, ruffled some radiologist feathers here in San Luis Obispo area. And they wanted to try to put me out of business. They wrote letters to some of the doctors I was working with. And then Dr. Mercola um, also received an FDA warning about that same time and another thermographer. And so he has always been in, against mammography and for thermography and, and less invasive options and more about focusing on prevention and, and whole health. And so he actually asked me to come to Chicago. He interviewed me. Um, it was a successful interview. His viewers, uh, uh, many viewers, uh, you know, enjoyed it, I guess, and, and were empowered by it. And the uh, state of Illinois also noticed. So they then sent him a threatening letter that they were going to have a hearing and they wanted to take his medical license away because he was anti-mammography 
and pro thermography and other options, even ultrasound. Like you cannot go against the the standard of care, which is right now mammography. And so they, they don't hear doctors recommending it to their patients right. because, because they can lose their license. Right. So I, I flew out to Chicago again. I helped prepare his attorney and um, he ended up winning and keeping his license and whatnot. But it's just sad that, that when, when doctors try to warn uh, women that, um, you know, that they are met with such, but it is, you know, multi-trillion dollar industry and you start, you know, you know, threatening that and you get a lot of people that aren't, don't have women's best, uh, you know, best, uh, uh, they're not looking out for you. <laughs> yeah, their best interest in mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, so since doctors don't always recommend this, even though they might want to they they can't or don't feel that they can many of them, there are some that are open, but, um, and there are some doctor's offices that, that have this, and we're going to link to anything that we talk about, like I'll link to at naturally recovering autism.com on the page where this podcast is released. Um, the Gilbert Welsh MD all and, uh, and Gaya's website, which is centralcoasttermography.com. I will link to those so you can look into this further and also get some resources as possibly where you can find somebody near you. You do have to do a little bit of research on that because they're not as plentif plentiful or they're not as openly out there, you know, telling people because they kind of have to watch, even though it's FDA approved and safe, you know, you've got you know, big brother sort of looking down and, you know, watching. So um, I've been doing it for years. Gay has been doing it for years. Lots of people have been doing it for years successfully. Um, so how, Gay, how can people then, uh, I guess they probably also want to know what the cost might be mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how they might be able, do you need a doctor's, you know, note or some type of a recommendation mm -hmm. to do this as well? People are probably wondering that. Yes, I, I, I myself charge $175. I actually let, I go over the images with my patients right after I take them, and then they get a very detailed report from a doctor. And so they'll have all their images, all of the regions that were measured, and a summary and recommendations that the doctor may have. And, um, and then so I, I think it ranges between 175 to, to 200, 225, depending. And then there is the Breast Cancer Foundation who will write grants to help women um, pay, for their, pay for their thermograms. And um, so that's been very helpful as well. So it's the United Breast Cancer Foundation. And then, um, you know, you do not need a prescription. You, you, you know, this is a non-invasive technology, so you do not need a prescription. And a lot of women don't realize this either, but you do not need a prescription to go get an ultrasound either or an MRI. Hmm. A lot of women will call and they'll be like, I'd have like to have an ultrasound. And then they'll be told that they have to have a mammogram first. And that is, and that is, a, that's not true. Like you're paying for a service and you do not have to let doctors dictate or your insurance company dictate. Like you have to be very careful. I mean, if you have really good insurance, what I've seen uh, from my experience is that can be really dangerous because then it's like, oh, your insurance approved all these different procedures and screenings. And it's like, if you keep, as uh, Christiane Northrup says, it's like, if you keep allowing them to mine for disease, they'll find something. Mm -hmm cause it with all their dangerous screenings. So again, you know, just taking your breath, taking a breath and also realizing you can watch, you know, what three pharmaceutical commercials right now on television and realize once you hear those side effects that are listing that you can't, you can't count on our government to be watching out for us. And these are like approved drugs and you're like, wow. And so, you know, yeah. some of them do more harm than the actual disease you're trying to, uh, you know, and you should be healing from it, not just uh, treating it, obviously. Well, this is about empowering the the woman to do it, just like we mm -hmm. do with the re naturally recovering autism. It's about empowering the parent. You mm -hmm. know, you don't want it. A lot of people have not gotten the correct information from a doctor or told their parents so they don't know anything. And right. it's absurd to think that you should not be able to take your own health into your own hands and all you need to do are have the resources and the knowledge. And so that's the key is to, if I hadn't done the research that I did, um, my son, they told me to drug him and try behavioral therapies and good luck, there was nothing that could be done. 
And I didn't want to do that. So I didn't. And I spent a lot of my own personal money and it was hard at times financially. And I know a lot of parents are going through that, but it was so worth it because today my son has recovered from what I did. Had I listened to them, he would not be, had I not researched it for myself. So that's why I say I give resources here on my website, these interviews with experts, you, you know, take, take it into your own hands. Don't just listen to one doctor and say, okay, well, that's what the doctor said. If you feel like you need to go out and look further and research further, do it. Trust your instincts and uh, looking. Yeah. Because there's some, I I do agree with that. Following the common sense and your instinct. It's very powerful. Like anytime your inner voice or that little voice inside of you is saying, yeah, I don't know. Then that means take a breath. Like hit the button. And I, 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 again, I really appreciate you trying to empower mothers and, and young women who are going to become mothers to, to, you know, just let them know. And, and I'm not, you know, I respect all women. If you do choose to have a mammogram and after you've done your research, absolutely. And that's the thing is by doing your own research and doing what you're most comfortable with the United States preventative services in 2009 and 2011, you know, let women know that mammograms can cause cancer and could metastasize it. But most importantly, that doctors need to honor a woman's choice and personal values. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's your body and you should be able to make the decisions for yourself and make educated decisions. That's, that's really the key too, is to have the knowledge to know that the decision you're making, you feel really good about rather than, well, I was told this, I don't know. And you're just scared, but doing it. Mm -hmm. And as Gail mentioned earlier, if you get a diagnosis, don't just panic and think, okay, I'll just do whatever they say. Again, just take a deep breath, take some time to yourself and start looking into all of the options so exactly. that you know what they are and that you can make, again, those, those knowledge and knowledgeable and educated decisions that feel right for you, whatever that may be. Because I think whatever people do in any way about anything, the, if you feel good about it and you believe in it, you feel right about it it will work for you. It will right. work much better for you than if something that you're doing but you don't believe in or don't feel good about. Exactly. And, and knowing that a lot of the, the more invasive choices like surgery and chemo and radiation, those aren't reversible. So that's why it's so important not to rush into it. And when, you know, people that take a, a more natural path or a less invasive path, those other things are always there, but you haven't done any harm. So, you know, there's only one thing that cures any disease, and that's your immune system. So really keeping that immune system, you know, em- empowered and strong. And also, you know, I've imaged hundreds and hundreds of women at this point. So you, you, you can imagine what I've seen and the stories that I've heard. And that actually inspired me to do a movie, which I've interviewed uh, many doctors and many women that tell their stories. Um, I interviewed Ben Johnson, uh, I, Christine Horner, uh, Duncan Turner, Carolyn Dean. I mean, many, many doctors that, that can actually get in front of the camera and warn women, uh, you know, about the dangers of the standard path and also educate them about a, other paths that they, the other options that they have available to them. And so I look forward to getting that, that message out there via a documentary of this year. So. Yeah, that that's really exciting that uh, that you're creating that documentary and uh, and when you do have it ready, even though it it won't be ready when we release this podcast, mm-hmm. when it is ready, give me the link or the information for where people can find it, and I will post it again on the page where this podcast is released at naturallyrecoveringautism.com, so that people can um, learn where that they can access that documentary and see more. Because as you mentioned to me before, too, it's really interesting, especially since you've been in the motion picture industry, you're really well aware of the fact that when you're like this on video or in audio uh, being interviewed publicly, it is freedom of speech. So you can say whatever you want as a doctor or anybody else, but doctors are allowed in this situation under interview or video or audio to say whatever they really truly believe and feel. Whereas in their own office and private practice, they're not allowed to say that. They do not have freedom of speech in their own office, which yes, is hands are tied. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you might be seeing a practitioner that 
would love to tell you mm-hmm. some alternative or different way to do something or, or tell you about thermography, but they can't. Exactly. So, you know, that's, that's another thing to say, you know, maybe ask them, I know that you can't say, but you know, what do you think about it? But again, they might not be knowledgeable about it. So if they say they don't know about it or they don't believe in it, or it's not accurate enough, or mammography is the best thing out there, then you've heard differently here and we're not telling you what to do. We're just educating. And now you have more resources to look into. So you can really know for yourself, find out for yourself if what you're hearing is accurate information. Yeah, this has been great. Do you have anything else? And I will link again to your website, centralcoasttermography.com and um, United Breast Cancer Foundation as well for grants about this. But is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up? Anything else that's uh, important to, to tell our listeners? Well, I think just reiterating what you had mentioned about your circumstance and that you have to take responsibility for your own health. And just, um, you know, it's, it, it takes time. I mean, most people will spend more time researching a car <laughs> to buy. Right. You know, that's, own that's true. Yeah. So just, you know, making sure we have, have our priorities straight. Because if, if you don't have, um, you know, like Shelly uh, Redford Young said, which I, this really resonated with me, you know, if you're not healthy and you lose your health and you lose all of your hopes and dreams and you lose the ability to do your work. Right. So just, you know, please take good care and engage early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how important it is to, to be empowered and know that, you, you know, those, those answers do exist. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because there are people out there that will help support you. Yes. Yes. There is a support network and, and that uh, I know that people will get overwhelmed to see those with parents, mm-hmm. with children with autism, all time. I don't have time to research. So I, and I'll link to this. I have developed a step-by-step online program that walks people from A to Z and it's global and they can do it from anywhere in the world because that's just like this. People are saying, I'm overwhelmed. I don't have time to research. Where do I find the information? So mm-hmm. As again, these, these links and these resources are really helpful so that, you know, it can help you access the information you need more readily, more easily, not having to search as deeply and take as much time to do so. Because I know that people sometimes will want to research something or want to learn more, but they feel so overwhelmed and they don't know where to begin or, you know, who to turn next. Yeah. So they don't do anything or they do just what they're being told. And even if it's not working, they just think, oh my gosh, I don't have time to research it. So these resources we offer for, um, for you to make life easier, that's the whole point is to try and empower you and give you the resources that you need to live that happier, healthier life for you, your children. And, and as your, your daughters grow up, they have this resource now as well. You've heard it. You pass it on to your daughter. I know I have a daughter, a teenage daughter, and I will definitely only be having her do thermography mm-hmm. and that um, I feel so much safer about it because if something is coming in the future or if there's some redness in detection, we know we can practice some prevention rather than waiting until it's too late to find out that there's a problem. So mm-hmm. um, really important information for us and our kids and and not to mention thermography is, or mammography is just darn painful. I mean, mm-hmm. to not have to put somebody through that. And if you have a child with autism, a female teenager or even 20 year old, to, to try to tell them that they're going to put their breast in a machine and squish it and it's going to be painful, they're not going to want to allow that anyway. Nice. Thermography, for those listening to you, again, yeah, yeah, I mentioned it, but it is just, you, you just stand there. There's no, nobody touches you. There's no pressure. There's no, in, no nothing invasive about it at all, um, which is really, really nice. So a very safe feeling as well. Yeah. Thank you again, Gaya, for being here. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your expertise and you being here and sharing your knowledge with us. Well, thank you very much, Karen. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care. And uh, yeah, definitely when you have that link to your documentary or where it can be accessed, let me know and I will put it on this page at naturallyrecoveringautism.com for our audience to be able to, to look at that in the future. We we'll look I forward to that. It. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> All right. Happy Mother's Day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.